Welcome to our service today from the Ingleborough team of churches. In this service we're going to be reflecting on the idea of forgiveness, so central to the Christian faith. This can be deeply personal as an issue and sometimes very painful. And certainly recently the church has had a lot to learn about forgiveness and the way that human beings uh, abuse one another, sometimes in dreadful ways. If you are strongly affected by any of the issues raised in this service and you would like to speak with someone in all appropriate confidence, then of course you're welcome to get in touch with the clergy of the Ingleborough team, uh, with myself and my colleagues. Uh, or you can also call the independently run Safe Spaces helpline. Uh, details uh, to contact ourselves or the helpline are available with this service. But Christianity offers hope and freedom through forgiveness. It's all part of the good news of Jesus Christ and it's a journey that we're going to be exploring in this service today. So as we begin, let's turn to prayer. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you. Let's pray. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's turn to our first hymn.
God is all about forgiveness. And Christians have been reflecting on uh, forgiveness and making it part of their lifestyle for as long as there has been a Christian church. We're going to hear a Bible reading in a moment which discusses how central forgiveness is to what God wants for the world and how important our acceptance before him truly is. Praise for spiritual blessings in Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfilment to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory, and you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of the truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. It can be helpful to keep forgiveness in the bigger picture. God's purposes, God's plans, what he wants for the world. It can be good to think about it in that kind of way. It's all about uh, being led on a journey towards forgiveness. But forgiveness is not easy. It can be really, really hard. We don't really want to excuse the bad things which are done by human beings to one another. Sometimes people have gone through terrible things and we don't want to excuse it at all. Actually, we want to have empathy with those who have suffered and to support them in whatever way that we can as those who are around those uh, who are the victims. Empathy is really important because it helps people know they are loved and cared for. We also, in some ways, don't want to let go of justice when it needs to be done. Some people have said that forgiveness actually uh, undermines justice. That's a big topic which could be explored a lot further and I'll mention a few things about it a little later. But for those who are the victims of uh, sometimes the, the bad, the dreadful things that we do to one another, we really need to keep solidarity with one another. That helps us stay together as a community. It helps those who have suffered to know that they are supported. And it helps us to grow as communities to be able to love and support them. Forgiveness is a journey. It's a difficult journey. But it's one that can bring in the long run healing and peace. Forgiveness has at times been used as a way to silence victims, uh, to put upon them a burden of needing to forgive. It should never be that way. Victims should never be silenced, but they should be listened to, supported and cared for. But what we really want is to find purpose, to find a positive solution to some of the challenges that uh, the wrongs of the world bring us. And we'll spend some time reflecting on those issues a little later in our service as well. 
But now let's turn to our next hymn. Setting forgiveness in that bigger picture is a helpful thing to do because it helps us to see a positive future. When it's part of a bigger picture, there's hope for the future. And that's really where uh, forgiveness uh, leads us into a positive future for everybody. But we do have to think about this issue of justice. You know, it's not right for things to just be swept under the carpet. But I think it's also good to remember that justice is a matter for authority. And in the terms of the faith, that rests both with God and with those human authorities of the world. Not everything under human authority is called to account. But one day with God, he will call everything to account. All people have to give account for what they've done. But the good news is that the movement, the plan of God is, incorporates forgiveness for us all. 
It's there for each one of us. The temptation with some of the wrongs that we suffer is to try and take that issue of justice to ourselves. And so often it can seem like vengeance. And often in that context, there's a winner and there's a loser. And sometimes there's a tussle to see who that's going to be. But one insight that was shared with me that I found very interesting was that forgiveness opens a door to where both parties can win. There isn't a loser or a winner, but both parties will gain because for both there's a positive future. That can be hard to see how it can be, but that's one of the doors that forgiveness begins to open. It can be good to listen to the stories of other people when we dwell upon forgiveness. A little later we'll hear uh, a story, some reflections from someone who had a lot to forgive uh, but had moved through it. We'll hear from, that's Corrie ten Boom, a Dutch prisoner in, during the Second World War who had some tremendous suffering that she went through but yet came to a place of forgiveness. In my own journey of faith, forgiveness has been absolutely crucial. There was a time in my life when I knew betrayal of a close friend. But actually in time, as I dwelt with the issues, as I realized how central forgiveness is in God's plans, I was able to find freedom, healing and peace. I was able to forgive my friend and we could move forward together. I've been speaking with uh, some other people this week and listening to those stories of forgiveness. And one shared how uh, somebody had something really difficult that they were carrying, a really difficult thing from the past that had been done to them. And actually in the course of time, they came to that place of forgiveness, being able to forgive the other person. And they said it felt like a giant shell had fallen off their back. and. It, and then they could stand tall. They could walk in freedom. They didn't realize they were under this weight before, but then they knew they were free. Someone else shared how they were in the process of being betrayed by someone close to them. And they said to the betrayer, I will forgive you. I will come to that place where I can forgive you. And they stood there amazed. They could hardly believe that even going through a time of hurt, they could declare their intention to forgive. And really that is one of the keys to forgiveness. It's not something we feel like doing because so often we don't. It's a choice that we make to forgive. A very hard choice, but it is a choice but it's a good choice which brings freedom. And it starts with a recognition that each one of us needs forgiveness for ourselves. None of us is perfect. None of us handles the wrongs done to us in a perfect way. All of us need forgiveness and acceptance before God. We're not perfect. We all do wrong. But actually the good news is that forgiveness is right there in God's hands. He's offering it to the world through Jesus Christ, his son. Jesus came, he died, he rose again, that we might know God's love poured into our hearts. He did that so that we could be forgiven. And when we know that, that helps us to make those choices to forgive. Whether we've got something really big to forgive or just those little things that come up in our path each day. We can forgive those time and time and again. But how do we make that choice to forgive? What are some of the steps that we can take? Well, one of the lessons that has been shared with me, which I have found is a really good way to process forgiveness it's almost like a prayer. 
you are praying to God and you just acknowledge the wrong, you choose to forgive and you ask God to bless the person using words like, I choose to forgive this person who did this to me and it made me feel like this. I ask you, God, to bless them. And so often it's that last step, which can be the hardest, but actually if we move to that place, we can know that we have truly forgiven. If we can ask God to bless them, that is a huge step on the path to forgiveness. Being reconciled with those who do wrong to us can come. It can be a simple step if it's a smaller thing. It can be a very big step if it's something big that has come between us. But forgiveness is one of the things which opens the door, opens up our horizon to how reconciliation could come. It can be a difficult step, but if we can take that step, we can come to a new place, a place of peace. Later in our service, we'll have a time of confession, confessing our own sins before God, and we'll turn to a time of prayer. But let's now hear from Corrie ten Boom about some of her reflections on this issue of forgiveness. Once there came a man to me, and said, will you save my, my wife? She is arrested. She has saved Jewish people, and now she is in a police station, and there is one policeman who will run the risk to set her free if we pay him 600 guilders, but I have no money. I said, oh man, what does money say? Let's see, I have 200 guilders, come back after an hour. And in that hour I asked all my friends, say, have you money? Give it. It means to save the life of a good woman. When that man came back, I gave him 600 guilders. That man was a quisling, a betrayer. His wife was not at all in prison. But the Gestapo, the police of the enemy had said, find out if Corrie ten Boom saves Jewish people. And he thought, I can do it and make some money. And he made some money. He went home with 600 guilders. But five minutes later, the Gestapo surrounded our house and we were all arrested. Later, when I was in a concentration camp, there came a prisoner from my hometown. And she said, say, do you know who has betrayed you? I said, no. And then she told that it was that man. And there came hatred in my heart. The man I had given my last penny. But I also know from the Bible what to do when we confess our sins, when we repent and ask forgiveness, then he is able to forgive us and the blood of Jesus will cleanse us from all the sins that we tell him and ask forgiveness for and repent. And I repented for my, my hatred and the Lord took my, that sin away. That's the great joy. The Bible tells very clearly what the Lord does when you repent. He takes such a sin and he casts it into the depths of the sea, forgiven and forgotten. That's what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't say it, but I believe he put a sign, no fishing allowed. <laughs> True. And do you know, when I had b uh, repented of that sin, the Lord, the Lord cleansed my heart with his blood. And a heart cleansed by the blood of Jesus, he fills with the Holy Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit is love. Love even for enemies. And instead that I hated that man, I loved him.
before we turn to a time of reflective prayer. Let us confess our own sins before God, seeking his healing and forgiveness. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sin we might live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. Let us confess our sins. Friend of sinners, you bring hope in our despair. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Healer of the sick, you give strength in our weakness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Destroyer of evil, you bring life in our dying. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from all our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's turn to prayer. Forgiveness brings freedom and healing. It's a journey, a difficult journey at times, not easy, but one that is in God's hands and all part of his good purposes for us. May we each know the love of God poured into our hearts to enable us to forgive and as we do so. If you'd like to speak to anyone about the issues raised in this service, you're all welcome to contact the team clergy or to call the helplines listed with this service. Please don't suffer in silence. People are there for you. And now let's close with a prayer of blessing. May God the Father, from whom every family in earth and heaven receives its name, strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love and pray for this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>